How do you identify a function? Well, recall first of all that a function is a relation in which in each input can only lead to one output. And we can represent functions in a number of different ways, numerically, graphically, algebraically, verbally. So we're going to take a look at different ways that you can identify whether or not something is a function. We can identify a function no matter how it is represented by figuring out whether each input leads to unique output. That's the bottom line. So let's recall, first of all, what is a relation? Remember, a relation is any set of ordered pairs. And since graphs are just made up of a number of points, which are ordered pairs, then all graphs are relations. But now, how can we tell whether a particular graph is a function? Because not all relations are functions. Remember, each input has to lead to only one output. So if we look at these examples of graphs, how are we going to distinguish which ones are actually functions and which are only relations? Well, there's a cool test called the vertical line test. A graph is the graph of a function if and only if there is no vertical line that crosses the graph more than once. So try it. Hold up a pencil vertically, straight up and down, and use it as kind of a scanner. Move it from left to right across one of the graphs. Does the curve of the graph hit your pen or pencil in more than one place? If not, then you've got a function. If yes, then you don't have a function. So look at these functions. Which ones do you think are the graphs of functions and which are not? Pause. Take a moment. Well, it turns out that the only one that's not a function is the one that looks like a parabola lying on its side. If you do the vertical line test, you'll find your pen or pencil that you're moving across that curve. That curve's going to hit your pencil in more than one place. So that's the vertical line test that's real easy to do when you've got the graph. Now, of course, you don't always have a graph. Sometimes you have data in a table and you might want to identify whether or not that set of ordered pairs in the table is actually a function. So looking at the table on the left, we have the day, that's our input, which day it is. So on day one, our output is the high temperature for that day. Now do you think that's a function? Does each input lead to a unique output? Yes, it does. Day one only has one high temperature. Day two only has one high temperature, and so on. Now, let's reverse that table. Let's make our high temperature our input. So we have a temperature. Now, given a temperature, can we tell from that what day it is? Well, what if we input a temperature of 95? What day is it? Well, according to our table, it could either be a day one or day four. So that's not a unique output. It's not a function. And it's not a function because if we put in a temperature of 95, we don't know what the output's going to be. We have a choice, and we can't have that to have a function. Many times we'll see a function in algebraic terms, so it'll look like an equation, and we have to sort out whether or not the equation is a function. So look at the list. We have y is equal to 2x plus 5. x is the input, y is the output. For each value that you put in for x, could you possibly calculate two different values for y? What do you think on that first one? Well, it turns out that that is a function. Each value you put in for x is going to give you a unique output. What about y is equal to x squared? Well, think about it. Does each value that you put in there for x give you a unique value for y? Well, yes, it does. Next one absolute value of y is equal to x. 
does each unique value of x give you a unique value for y? And it turns out no. And why no? Well, really all you have to do here is to pick, find one example where it doesn't work. Let's say x is 4. Then what would our output be? Where our output could be either a 4 or a negative 4 because the absolute value of either one of those is going to give you the input of 4. So we have a single input value which gave us two different outputs, so that does not qualify as a function. Here's this next example, x squared plus y squared is equal to 1, which happens to be the equation of a circle. And what I've done there is I've gone ahead and solved that for y, so it looks a little bit easier to try to figure out whether you're going to get a unique output for each input. So think about it. Will each unique value of x that you put in there only give you one value for y? Well, it turns out no. Let's take a simple example. Say x is 0. What happens? Well, if x is 0, then you get plus or minus the square root of 1. So that's two different values for y. So one single input, x is equal to 0, gave us two different outputs. Finally, look at the last one. Will each unique value of x that you put in there only calculate out to one value of y? Well, yes, in fact, it does. So get some practice on this.